Hi, my name is Bill Witt. I'm with the University of Kentucky, the College of Agriculture, Department of Plant and Soil Sciences. And my uh, profession is as a weed scientist, where I work on removing weeds that we don't want uh, in any one place. And those plants that we call weeds, like this thistle, are weeds only because humans don't like them. These plants we call weeds grow exactly where they're supposed to. They have an ecological niche and they just are happy to be there. And in our case, many of these are very happy to be in our horse pastures. This particular one is musk thistle, sometimes called nodding thistle, depending on what part of the country you're in. This thistle and this one are plumeless thistle or biennial thistles. And in the second year of growth, they produce a seed stalk and produce seeds. And they're very, very attractive colors of their their flowers actually. These are non-native thistles. They were brought in uh, somewhere in the 1940s, 1950s. We're not exactly sure, uh, at least in this state in Kentucky. But we do know there's several things about these that they're very, very prolific seed producers. And if you can, we have a good breeze today and they spread readily by wind-borne seeds as these little seed appendages on the seeds or the, help them uh, move uh, several hundred feet, hopefully no further than that. Most of the time, as far as the horse pasture manager, owner, doesn't care if they have musk thistle or plumeless thistle, they just know they have kind of a purple pinkish flowered thistle and they want it removed. And these two are actually very easily to remove herbicidally, very easy. And again, if you see a plant like this that's flowering, there's no need to go out and spray it with a herbicide for two reasons. One, once these seed, these will go ahead and make seeds, no matter what you do spraying them. And secondly, this plant's gonna die anyway. It's a biennial, it will die at the end of its second year of growth. So there's really no need to do anything other than if you get in here before seeds, before flowering, mow it or chop it out and pre prevent any running the risk of seed formation. And these things, like there are lots of them around. You can either, mowing does no good for removing of these when they're short and then growing in a rosette in a small early in the year. Uh, most of these will germinate. These little seeds like I had over here, these seeds germinate in uh, October, November, December, uh, generally in October, November, and that's a great time if you're gonna spray them, but they have little tiny plants and the whole time you're mowing a pasture, you're just mowing right over the top of them and doing no good until they get seed stem elongation and then you can mow them off with a mower. Behind us is another thistle. This is bull thistle. And in this particular case, we have one that hasn't started flowering yet. And it again, it's another biennial and probably not flowering because this is just a year old plant. And so next year this plant will flower and produce a seed or seed head. And again, the heads of the seed look similar to the uh, reddish pinkish purple color uh, that we saw in the other two, th the two previous thistles. Now, one of the ones that gives us the worst time in central Kentucky is one called Canada thistle. And it's one of the world's worst weeds. This little thistle doesn't get much taller than this in our pastures. It has much smaller flowers, much more uh, compacted area. But the biggest difference is this plant is a perennial and not only reproduces from seeds, but it has an extensive underground root system and it just continues to expand. And you can even see that here, these plants are all interconnected underneath, under the soil. You see this one over here, it just keeps expanding out. And um, so this is one that's difficult to even keep in place in our area where we're growing these weeds. It's just a very, very robust problem. It's called Canada thistle in this country. It was introduced into Canada from uh, Europe. And in Kentucky, we are sort of on the southern range of its adaptability. It does much better to the north of us. So you won't, you'll see this occasionally in some places south of Kentucky, but not very much in the southern U.S. 
but uh, again it is the um, all my 40 years of trying to kill weeds this is the toughest one i've ever run into it's very difficult and it's just as difficult in crops as it is pastures so if you don't have it work hard at not getting it prevention is always the best way on these weeds or if you see a little patch like this chop it up take it out of there you should dig it up and take it out of there, but if you're not into that, just every year keep it going from seeds and you'll eventually get some semblance of control with this. But again, this is a very, very tough weed. And the biggest difference between this one and the three biennial thistles we talked about, they tend to grow off by themselves and just individual plants. These grow in thick mats and literally will get so thick that you can hardly walk through them. So this is a particularly uh, tough thistle problem to have.